Hello, I'm Dr. Dan Ratner. As part of our how-to series on crushing doubt, we are going to talk today about how to cope with and understand depression in a way that can neutralize or shift it much more quickly than you might think. To stay connected, hit subscribe, ring the bell for notifications, and put your comments below. Our subject today is depression. Not the most happy of topics, of course, but it's a very important one. We all hit times where we think that things are bleak and awful. And I want to talk about how to understand it and how to cope with it. So let's talk about what is depression. What 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 is this this thing that we we really all experience? And I want to encourage you that there are people who will act like they don't. Will go on Facebook and everybody's cheerful. Listen, it's not easy to be a human being. So, what is depression? The way I define depression, this is my own definition, but it is a faulty narrative of self attack. Depression is an attack against yourself, and I want to underline the word faulty. Listen, we're not perfect. There are things that you can say when you are say, you know, to yourself when you're depressed, and they're gonna sound right on. And the smarter you are, the more crafty it'll be. So it you might bring an attack that sounds right. But I'm telling you, there's if you are feeling depressed, there is something in that attack that is not fair not true. So understanding depression as a self-attack is an important part of disabling it. Where does depression come from, though? This is something that, uh, amazingly, it took me a long time to figure this out, even though I grew up in a family of therapists and I had a huge amount of therapy uh, as a child and as a young adult and throughout my adulthood. And it was only really through mind-body work that I came to understand that so much of things is not just about kind of how you are thinking about it, but the fact that you experience trauma. Now, that's a word that it, it's a buzzword for a lot of people. Some people do not like to think of themselves as having trauma. There's a difference between what I call capital T trauma and lowercase t trauma. Capital T trauma is like the death of a parent or you were raped, or things like that. So, with lowercase trauma, what you want to be thinking about is the fact that it's anything that really made you feel threatened or unsafe. All right, so it's not usually going to be something like, I got teased at school one day. But if you got teased at school every day, that's traumatic. It's something that seeps into your sense of self. That's what trauma is about. So I really do think for any therapists out there who are watching or people for people who are in therapy, make sure that your therapist is trauma-informed. What I mean by that is they have to understand that your suffering is not just related to some bad wiring in your mind or some uh, familial way of thinking about things. I'm telling you that's not the case. It relates to whether you had trauma. So let's go through some examples of trauma. Uh, the death of a parent uh, or a sibling. These, these things, uh, but especially the death of a parent, uh, can cause major trauma. And let me say this. Most trauma comes from childhood. You can have traumatic experiences in adulthood, but usually they are echoing things from the past. And that's what depression is all about. Divorce, especially if it was very acrimonious, but even if it wasn't, that's a trauma. These are your parents splitting up. You want them to stay together. It's, it's a, it, it threatens your whole sense of self. Abuse of all kinds. Physical, sexual, and emotional. These are things that are traumatic. They seep into our sense of self. And that is where depression comes from when, when we have a bad sense of ourselves. Major conflict in the home. This is another one. Uh, substance use in the home. It's, uh, it's often in the home, you know, because that's where you're supposed to be feeling safe. But it can come from individual events that you might see outside of the home. Violent events. Um, you know, if you see a car accident and you saw a dead body or something like that, that can be traumatic. It's very, very hard to, to deal with. And you're, you're probably wondering, how does this relate to depression? Well, it's not going to relate to depression, generally speaking, unless it infiltrates your sense of self. So if you are having a response to it and you start to criticize yourself for it, 
that's when it can get into depression. Depression is self-criticism. Having really bad illnesses in the family or in yourself is another form of trauma. And here's another big one. Denial of trauma is a trauma in and of itself. When you go, this is something that is most clearly true with uh, sexual abuse. But really abuse of all kinds. A lot of times you will go to someone and tell them this is happening. And when they deny it, when a parent denies it, somebody or a teacher some, or a therapist, that's, that could be particularly traumatic and I've had that happen. When your trauma is denied, that's a trauma in and of itself. And sometimes it's the biggest trauma. A lot of times people say with sexual abuse, for example, that the abuse itself, as bad as it was, it's 10 times worse if somebody didn't believe you. Because that causes you to question your reality. When you are questioning your reality, that opens the door to depression. And we all question our reality some, so we're all open to it. So what is your job in fighting depression? First of all, you have to recognize it. Depression doesn't feel like depression when we're in it. It feels like accurate thoughts. They may be negative thoughts, but we think they're accurate. So your job is... Do not believe the depression. You recognize it. You don't believe it. And then you learn how to fight it. So we're going to get into how to fight it now. Once you've recognized that you are feeling depressed, which, you know, I want to be careful about that because you could, you could say, oh, well, I feel depressed. But I'm talking about, I'm not just talking about feeling down or not feeling happy. People use the term depressed in a very general way now. I'm talking about when you are feeling in a, in a way where you really are not feeling good about yourself more globally. Not just like, oh, I'm having a bad day because my football team lost. That, that can happen. Listen, if your football team loses and you feel like, I lose all the time, I'm a loser. See, that's depression where you're, you're attacking yourself. So you need to pinpoint the specific theme that knocked you back into it could be a conversation you had, could be an email you got. You want to be very thoughtful about what knocked me into this. You also want to be aware that these things come and go. You're not going to believe that when you're in it. When you are feeling depressed, you are going to think, I'm always in it. It, it feels like it's always there. And part of it is because it's very familiar. But the other part of it is that the part of our conscious experience that actually feels happy or likes ourselves is blocked out during depression. So you recognize it. You pinpoint the specific feeling that knocked you back into it. But here's the, here's the tricky part. A lot of times you're not aware of what knocked you into it. So you're going to need to do some thinking about the timing of when did I start feeling this way? The job of really any therapy experience or your job emotionally is to figure out ways to understand yourself more fully. Now, I need to talk about something called the unconscious. Some people have trouble believing in unconscious thinking. What it is, is at some level you know about this, but not in a way that you are consciously connected to. With disturbing emotional information, it gets driven out of our conscious awareness. But guess what always knows about it? The body. And depression is in the body. There's something that happens in depression, and I learned about this in grad school, uh, and it certainly has proven to be true, that people's actual physical presence slows down when they're depressed. So if you're, if you're an athlete and you're depressed, you're not going to run as fast. You're not going to have as quick reactions. If you're truly depressed, you, you, can't, you can't function at the same level. So what do we need to make conscious? Things like anger and, you know, at its extreme, rage sadness, guilt, shame. These are feelings that we don't want to deal with and we make them unconscious. And then they pop up either in a physical symptom or in something like anxiety, which we talked about last week, or depression. So I know what you're thinking because I get this question all the time. Well, how can I be aware of it if it's unconscious? Yes, <laughs> fair, fair point. But this is where journaling can help or talking to a therapist can help or even just paying attention to the symptoms and understanding them correctly. And by symptoms, in this case, I mean depression. 
The problem with depression is we think there's nothing to look at. We just think, no, it just, it sucks. And that's the way it is. And there's nothing to look at. And I'm right. Well, you have to start calling it into question. The minute depression is there, you have to start calling it into question. One extreme form of depression, obviously, is suicidal ideation. So I talked about how what depression is, is basically a self-attack. When the self-attack goes so far that you are hating yourself enough that you don't want to be alive. And a lot of times that's, that's a passive ideation where you, you don't really want to be alive, but you're not going to do anything about it. An active suicidal ideation is you've got a plan, you've got ideas about how to do it, you've got access to those ideas. That's more active. But either way, suicidal ideation is a self-attack. I mean, that sounds really obvious because that's what's actually going to happen if you, if you follow it to, to its end. But in a way, it's not obvious. In a way, we think that it's about, well, the situation is hopeless or I'm in such pain. And I totally understand that. I have all people understand this. I deal with chronic pain. But suicidal ideation is a self-attack and it's just like depression. You need to recognize you don't always feel this way. Even if you feel that way a lot of the time, you need to understand when you do and why you do. And the thing that I use to distinguish this is when you are, quote unquote, in trauma. What I mean by that is something is so upsetting that it, it shifts you to a different mindset. I have learned to experience myself as fine or in trauma. <laughs> it's one or the other. And it can be a very subtle thing that can knock me into in trauma. A negative interaction with a person, some negative feedback. These kinds of things can really knock you backwards, but only if they relate to your past and your global picture of yourself. When you can identify what it was that knocked you back into trauma, you'll feel better. The depression will lift. The suicidal ideation won't even be there. I used to, and, and I have had suicidal ideation. A lot of people have, and it's important that I say that because we want to we want to normalize that people have that. You're not you're not a freak for having that. Many people have it. It's not something people talk about. But the key is to recognize that if you can understand what it's about and you can ease the self attack, as soon as it makes sense, it'll ease, and it happens pretty instantly. Whereas depression and suicidal ideation, they feel like they're going to last forever. So the thing to do is to recognize what you are saying to yourself. And that essentially depression and suicidality are an argument against your own existence. And it could be something like you get in a fight with uh, your wife or your husband and you think, oh, how did I marry this person? Why, what's wrong with me? And boom, the depression and the, and the suicidal ideation can come rushing in. But if you can identify it and recognize, no, that's a self-attack, then you have something you can do against depression. So here are a couple of strategies uh, that you can utilize to combat depression once you've recognized it and once you've pushed past the fact that it's not always there and it's not correct information and it is a self-attack. Okay, uh, the first thing is a little complicated especially for psychologists and for psychology. In psychology, we like to talk about the shades of gray in life, not having black and white thinking, because black and white thinking is the kind of thing that gets you into depression. The ironic thing is you can use black and white thinking to get yourself out of the depression. So I'm going to explain that in a second, and then you can return to the shades of gray that you need where you know nobody's all good or all bad. We're a, we're a mix of things. But in depression, you're feeling that you are all bad. And I'm not advocating for now think you're all good because you're, uh, let's be realistic. It, nobody's going to think that, especially when they're in depression. But in black and white thinking, you can gain access to a different narrative that isn't a self-attacking one. So at the time of depression, it's a good thing to put the blame where it belongs. I'm not saying to, to harp on that or to hate that person that caused it or to dig deeper into resentment. But at the moment of depression... You want to put the blame where it belongs because in depression or suicidal ideation, you're putting it all on yourself and it is not all on yourself. You did not get there by yourself. So find out who helped you get there and what experiences helped you get there and put the blame there, not on you. 
One thing I like to say is you need to be fiercely in your own corner. This is a phrase of my own, but I've come to feel it for myself. At moments like that, you need to be fiercely in your own corner. But when you're out of depression, try not to stay there because you'll get into resentment and you could start to justify some bad behavior just by the fact that you are being fiercely in your own corner. That's, I'm not talking about in behavior with other people. I'm talking about how you're thinking about it yourself. So one last thing I want to share with you. Um, it was New Year's 2001, and I was in a depressed state, uh, a, a, a big one, actually. And, and it related to all kinds of things, which I can get into if you're interested. Put it in the comments. I'm happy to answer. But I decided... I had never made a New Year's resolution before, and but it was New Year's, and I was like, well, okay, I think I understand something, and I, I got this, uh, interestingly, from uh, my brother is an author, and he wrote uh, a book that actually hasn't been published, but it's my favorite of his books, and it, it helped me understand something, and, and maybe it was because we come from a similar background that I could understand something, and the resolution that I took from it was that I wasn't being good to myself. With depression, with suicidal ideation, you're not being good to yourself. You're attacking yourself. So I realized, okay, one way that I can help myself is to start giving to myself. I wasn't giving to myself enough. And I decided that year I was going to give at least one thing to myself every day of that year. And it, it could be big or it could be small. It could be a trip I was going to take. It could be a phone call to a friend. It could be putting down a burden that I didn't want to have. It could be letting something go. It could be bringing something up that you can't let go. There's all kinds of different ways to do it. And a couple of things happened shortly after that year uh, began, as I began doing these things, uh, including I was invited to go to the Super Bowl. And I was like, well, I don't know. I'd have to reschedule a, a couple of patients. And I, and I said, what am I doing? No, the answer is yes. <laughs> and I went. And in addition, I think it was about f somewhere, it was like 45 days later or something that I met my wife. And I gave myself the option to talk to her when I would have been shyer in the past. So when you recognize depression, when you understand that it comes from the past, these broad themes, and when you understand it comes from self-attack, and you understand that it's not always there, then you can start to think about what to do about it. And the things to do about it can involve giving to yourself and putting the blame where it belongs temporarily. I'm not saying to stay there and being fiercely in your own corner. These are very important things for combating depression. If you haven't already, click subscribe, ring the bell for notifications, and put your comments below. This will be an ongoing discussion. You know, depression, uh, I was going to say, isn't going anywhere. But if we have anything to say about it, yes, it is. Thank you for watching.